Welcome to Leaders of the West, a podcast for innovators and change makers. I'm your host, Jesse Jarvis, the founder of Of the West, and I'm sitting down with agriculturalists, entrepreneurs, executives, and everyone in between with the goal of digging into the strategies, mindsets, and lessons that have been crucial to the success of ag and Western. Whether you're carrying on the next generation of your family's operation, starting something from scratch, or determined to climb up the leadership ladder, we're going to inspire you to continue to dream big, growing not just you, but the future of agriculture and Western as a whole. Let's go. Welcome to this week's episode of Leaders of the West. Today, we are sitting down with the one and only Mary Pat Sass, and I'm really excited about this conversation because we are going to talk about what led Mary Pat to leave her corporate career, to come back to her husband's family farming operation, and to raise her kids, become a stay-at-home mom, and now become a multi-passionate entrepreneur. But what a few of you may be wondering is why would you be talking about somebody leaving your career when Of the West's goal is to put more people in careers and to help people find jobs? And so here's the reason that I'm really passionate about this and why I think that this is an important topic. Because for so many of us who come from family farming or ranching operations or family ag businesses, a lot of us leave those operations and we go have a job, have a career, follow that journey of our lives. But then we want to come back, right? Or maybe you live on your spouse's family farming or ranching operation and you have a career and you would like to be more present with your children or on the operation, but that off the farm income is really important to your livelihood. So I know that this is the topic that keeps a lot of people up at night thinking, how can I do it all? How can I be involved in our family operation? How can I be involved in our family business? How can I be at home and raise my kids? while also providing for my family because with my job, I have health care and I have insurance and I have a 401k. So Mary Pat is going to walk us through how she made those decisions alongside her husband and what led her to really realizing that she was ready to leave her career, wanted to come back home, raise her family, be more present on their farming operation, and how she also found a fit on their family farming operation as well. So with that, today we have Mary Pat. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Perfect. So I gave a little bit of a backstory as to why I'm so excited to have you on in this episode. But to kick things off in your own words, will you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background on your family's dairy operation, your career in the corporate world, and how all of that has really led to where you are today? Yeah, I hope I don't get too wind- windy in this. So, <laughs> but I grew up on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. That was really, I guess, where my passion for agriculture was planted or where that seed was planted and loved, loved that way of life. I actually started college for dairy genetics and quickly decided that wasn't what I wanted to end up doing for like having my big girl job be. <laughs> and I got into the crop side of agriculture through college and started different jobs really directly related to agronomy, ended up getting what I thought was my dream job, I guess, I or the dream company that I wanted to work for. And that's, uh, it was like, again, in agronomy. And that's how I met my husband who was farming in Illinois. I really, truly never, ever planned or thought that I would be an Illinoisan because there's, if you live up here, you know, there's like a vengeance between the states that border Wisconsin, if you live in Minnesota or if you live in Illinois, like you're pretty much our arch enemies, jokingly. But anyway, (laughs) I just really didn't think I would live in Illinois. And met my husband, fell in love, found out that I was going to be spending the rest of my life with him. And since he was farming, I knew that that was where I would have to plant roots. And I ended up keeping my job and kind of working through the company through different roles. And I think it was like, a month before we were getting like yeah a month before our wedding i transitioned into my dream role which was an ag technology manager it was a big thing like all of that happening at once new job new new husband moving Having just moved holy cow yeah i i had moved before so we lived together while we were engaged you know not always the most recommended plan of attack but 
I changed roles throughout like that whole period of wedding planning and all of that. And then I wasn't sure I wanted to have kids. Honestly, I kind of felt like when I was in my early 20s, I would be okay either way, having kids or not having kids. After I got married, it was like the baby juices just started running through my veins. (laughs) And all of a sudden, I felt like I'm with this man who makes me feel so loved and I want to settle down and have kids with him. So we had kids. I think it was two years after we got married. Our first was born and I was planning to keep working. I had transitioned to a different position again because my job prior to having kids had me traveling all the time. I was like in a hotel two or three nights a week all over the state of Wisconsin. I kept that territory and it was a lot. Honestly, I it was a very demanding job, but I probably as an employee put a lot more pressure on myself than I really needed to than was expected of me, but I was like a high performing type of person. And after I had my son, it was a literal light switch movement, very much 180 of where my priorities were going to lay. And I just realized like life is so much more than a career for me. And I had poured so much into that. I just felt like I couldn't function the same. Obviously, any time a big life event happens like that, you just change the way you look at life. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. So then how long after you had your first child, then did you leave that role? Yeah, it was six months. He was six months old when I quit. I tried to get back into it and the job transition had me working from home in an office on Zoom, which in 2018, that was like to work remote was not as common as it is now because it was (laughs) pre-COVID. And I had a really hard time with that. I really interact well face-to-face with people, but being home alone really wore on me quickly. My mental health was like tanking. And it was winter too, so that probably didn't help. It's just combo of being inside the cold weather, you know, just not getting enough of what I wanted. And so it was a hard decision to leave because I was bringing in half of our family's income and the steady half of our income. The farm is not always, I mean, you hope it is, but it's not always steady. And yeah, it was a it was a big change for our family. Well, so you bring up a topic though that I think that is completely off topic, but I do want to touch on because I am somebody too. We had our son in 2018 and I, prior to having him, I had a part-time remote job. We did a lot through Zoom. That's actually how the team met. And it was a job that I kept until recently. And that is one thing that I think a lot of people think is they they think, oh, a remote job is so wonderful. But it can be challenging when you are one in a rural area, you are in your office by yourself, you're not actually having any outward conversations other other than when you're on Zoom. And that, like, I have gotten in that same phase where I think, holy cow, like, this is wearing wearing on me, or I feel like I may be less creative because I don't have somebody to, like, walk into the next office and bounce an idea off of, or Mm -hmm. just have that other, like, that different perspective or perception. Yeah, I agree. And I was also the person that I just felt like from the working hours, I always have to be working to justify my job. And like, I felt like maybe it was it was a new position in the company. I didn't really give it a lot of time. Like I know some people stay for so, so long. I just didn't. But maybe that's part of my I'm a little bit impulsive. My personality is a little impulsive. But it made sense for me and my personality to not be sitting here. I I can do it in small bursts, but for that whole like eight hours a day feeling like I have to be glued to my desk, I can't like be moving around or doing anything was really hard for me. Yeah. Eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, or whatever somebody's hours are, that can definitely be a challenge for sure. So I love that you bring that up because if you are somebody who's listening and you think, man, I would love a remote job. That's actually something that we have been working on of the West is a remote job series. So if you haven't tuned into that, definitely look into that because we do have a lot of resources for both employers and job seekers on, are you the right fit for a remote job? Because I too, I'm better in person. That's what I always tell people. I feel like I maybe come across harsh in emails or like I'm, I want to pick up the phone or I want to be in the room. So I love that even though that was on my end, a little bit of off topic, I love that you brought that up. So thank you for that. Yeah. So then how long had the idea of leaving your job and coming to the farm full time been on your heart before you made the move? So was it was it kind of when you had 
that baby and then in that six months leading up to when you left? Yeah, I had never planned to not be working. Um, but also my plan when I left was not to come back like and be on a like have my role change on the farm. I didn't think I would be involved. I actually didn't really see a place for me. I don't know. It's weird when you're the in-law coming into the farm. It's like a weird, I don't know. Maybe I put the pressure on myself, but I didn't want to be blasting in there like, okay, I don't have a job. So now I'm just going to like work with you guys. I think it would have gone really differently <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, I, I totally believe that. So I actually, I wrote a couple questions down because I specifically wanted to touch on some things and that's one of those. So I'm going to jump to that in a little bit. But yes, I think that what you say about being the in-law and then that can kind of make you feel out of place, even though your family is so wonderful and you love them so much. That's something that is, again, another, I don't want to call it a challenge or an obstacle, but something, a consideration in mm -hmm. in when somebody wants to leave their job. So prior to leaving your job, what were the biggest like considerations or obstacles mm -hmm. before you really made that decision? I can imagine was healthcare one of those because I think that's a hang up for a lot of people. Yes, insurance, healthcare, just benefits, 401k. We had never, I mean, we were still young at ish, young ish. We hadn't really set up something for my husband yet as far as like retirement and stuff goes. So we just, we didn't have a plan. And plus, like, leaving, my plan was to be a mom. I had no other plans, like nothing, which is great. That's like a the most important job I still do today. And the the one that takes the most of my time and is the most really the most important to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was there was a lot to consider. And then of course financially, could we make it happen on just the income from the farm? And how do we have to adjust our family's goals so we can make it happen? Because you, we couldn't have been living the same lifestyle without making some changes. Right. So then how did you kind of, so we, ident you, I, you guys identified the obstacles and then how did you prepare against those? Are there any like specific examples that you can think of, of like what, what you did to adjust for that? Well, I think I, I kind of am rewinding a little bit, but before I even decided to leave, I sat down with my husband and we made a list of pros and cons, like what, what are the cons of me not having a job? What are the pros of me not having a job? And the cons were just all things that were we could figure out, like finding a different form of health care or health sharing is what we, we do now with like a Christian health sharing company. And that's been working really well for our family. And, you know, finding a financial advisor to help with the finance side of it and investing for our future so that we can set ourselves and our and our future generations up. So we really had to just kind of get more organized with how we did things, I guess, if that makes sense. No, and that's planning. perfect. And I love that like it is as simple as a pro and con list, but like you have to have a place to start. And that is such a great way of here are, here's this list of things that we need to prepare for or plan for. And we're just going to check them off one by one. Mm -hmm. And it definitely took time. Like we didn't have it all figured out the day I left my job. Not even. No, close. no, <laughs> nobody they give does. You, they give you, I mean, maybe my willingness to leave so quickly was that you, there are programs where like if you leave your job, you can have your insurance for a certain amount of time before you have to find a different plan. So there's different avenues to go down. And I look at the way we have our benefits or our health care a lot differently now being on our own versus when we had it through my employer. Right. So then after you made the leap, what did life look like right after? Right after I was like in shock, I think, because I just... I loved being home with my son. I loved being the stay-at-home mom and being able to be involved more in his life. But I felt like a very big guilt for not contributing financially to the family, which I don't think is uncommon for moms who choose to stay home. <laughs> no, I think especially when you're somebody who is driven and you have – like you've checked all the boxes up until this point in your dream career – you are clearly somebody who is a high achiever. So mm -hmm. even though you you move into doing something that is so important in raising your family, it's a very different type of achievement, if you will. Right. It's almost like an unrecognized achievement because I don't know. It's like if you're climbing the ladder corporately or getting recognized, it's just not the kind of recognition that you get from being a mom. But the mm -hmm. value of what you're doing is so great. I don't know. 
No, I totally get it. And I think that even though it's hard to articulate that, but I think that all of those listeners who are in that spot, you know, who have young kids who have those careers and they've thought about coming back to the farm or ranch, you know, whatever their operation may be, they know exactly what we're talking about in that. Mm -hmm. But because you are such a high achiever, after you left, was there ever a part of you that missed that original career? Yeah, I think I missed working on something that brought me joy. I mean, obviously being a mom raising my kids brings me the most joy, but filling my cup in other ways as well. So I did kind of venture off and just try different things. I like got into a lot of DIY projects, sewing. I was sewing bibs. I was just doing a bunch of stuff. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. And I was in an MLM for a little while. And I eventually just started sharing our story online because I was home supporting my husband on the farm. And that's kind of where the whole social media journey started, which led to my businesses. So I feel like I what you were saying earlier about how your creative energy being home working remotely was kind of like it kind of gets squashed. I felt like when I left my job, it just opened up the doors of creativity for me. And I felt like there's a lot of things I want to try and just figure out where I land. Oh, I'm envious of that. I love that though. But I am totally, I liken my creativity to, and I guess our listeners have probably heard me say this before, but I'm a little old lady out there with a bucket pumping my well. And I walk out to my well and some days I could pump it for an hour and no water comes out. And then other days I pump it and there's so much water that I don't have enough buckets for it. And it could go a month or two before I ever have creative water coming out of my little well. <laughs> well, I can relate to that at this stage of life for sure. But I feel like that moment, those months right after I left my job is where I felt like the rush of it, like the well was just... Oh, I'm sure too, because you've all of these things that you've thought like, oh, I can't do that right now because I have this job. I have this other commitment, this thing that, you know, people are expecting of me. But then when you didn't have that, and Mm -hmm. obviously a little bit of time to fill because babies are not easy, but they nap and they Mm -hmm. do things like that to where you do have a little bit more free time to, I don't want to call it dabble, but just to, to follow those creative interests. Yeah. That, and being a farm wife, I guess there's seasons where I'm a home alone at like with my kids, putting them to bed or whatever, you don't have your spouse there to fill your time or anything, you know, so there it can get lonely. And I feel like I filled the space with those lonely times kind of creating things. I love that. So then let's talk about, because you alluded to sharing online has then led to some of your other businesses. And I want to talk about those because I am consistently impressed with what it is that you do. So tell us a little bit about the cheesery and about Grounded Journals as well. Yeah. So my growing up on a dairy farm, my family shipped all of their milk to a creamery that produces cheese. And I started, I think it it was the end of 2019, a business marketing that cheese. So it's basically just, I buy the cheese from the creamery. We have our own private label. And then I market it down. I was just really started off locally to people in Illinois because there's a different availability of like good quality cheeses here versus Wisconsin. It's crazy. It's not that far away, but they just are not available to us. So I started it that way, ended up turning it into shipping because I was sharing online the story and people really wanted to get the cheese that we were selling on their front door. So that business really took off ever since the first few months of it. I've had to limit the orders I do because it's just been crazy. And in 2021, my family got out of the dairy business. We They sold the herd. And it's been kind of honestly a really beautiful story because I started this business because of I wanted to keep my ties to the Wisconsin dairy industry alive. And I really have a passion for that industry and helping promote and share it. And then my dad retired and he's helping me with the cheesery and he still has a pulse on that industry that he poured his whole life into. So he's taking over the shipping side for me because I've kind of, I don't know, as a business owner, I'm sure that you felt this, but if you are doing too many things, you don't do any of them well. And I feel yes. like that's <laughs> that's where I've gotten for sure. And so I've had to kind of pass the torch to him. And I have a cousin that's been helping me as well. And it's been honestly incredible to have that help and feel like I can I can share this with others. It doesn't all have to be me. And they have a passion for it and they can keep it living as long as they want to. And yeah, it's been, that's been an incredible, I feel like journey through the stages of business with that one. 
So then as far as grounded journals go, this is something that I find to be so special. So for those of you guys who haven't heard of this, make sure you listen to this part because this is the coolest thing that you're about to learn about. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Well, yes. So uh, I mean, life is wild, right? Like we all just go through so much. I don't even know where to start with this because this project has been a real passion project of mine since the idea. And I think maybe obviously like growing up on a farm and then marrying into this family farm that had such a rich history, I really wanted to find a way to capture our memories and help tell the stories through through the generations. And the idea really came to me. It was shortly after I quit my job, but it's funny how long it took for it to actually develop. So I think it was like literally the month I quit my job, we were sitting down with my husband and his grandparents. And I just, I love them so much. His grandfather has passed away now, but he was like the coolest man, very faithful man. Just his stories from the farm, his stories of faith, like all of that are just, when I think about him, I just want to like, I picture myself like getting hugged by him because he was just the most wonderful man. And we were sitting down with them and my grandmother-in-law, we were asking questions like, detailed questions about what they did because they were vegetable farmers and they sold to market in Chicago and like had to move west to kind of get away from all the expansion from the city. And we were asking questions and they were like, oh, I can't remember that detail. You know, I wish we would have written more down. And that's really where the spark was because I actually I don't have the journal right in front of me, but I have this old journal that I used to write like about when I had my babies, like different things they were doing. And I wrote about that night and I wrote Grandma said she wished she would have written more down. Uh, This is me telling myself I'm going to write more down. (laughs) And then we had a couple of pretty big life events. Like Josh's grandpa died. My grandma had a really bad stroke and lost a lot of her cognitive ability. And it was like in that moment, I was like, okay, if I'm going to be doing something to like really be serious about keeping memories alive, I need to just kick this in the pants and do it. And I knew of other companies that sold prompted journals and as ways to like keep track of your babies. It was mostly like baby books that I was inspired by. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Anyway, to keep track from like zero to 18, you know, and there's other ones to capture people's memories, memoir books, but there was nothing tailored to the ag industry that I thought would fit what I was looking for at the time. And so I just started coming up with prompts that would help people write about their experiences. Because I think the most intimidating thing when you're thinking about recording your story is what to write about. So the prompts are meant to help spark those thoughts and the memories and write down those details that might be forgotten otherwise. So yeah, I came up with a couple of versions. There's a memoir for the older generations to recollect their years. And it's really a little more general, but it is still agricultural based. And it's for farmers and ranchers, kind of written in the vocabulary that would fit either or. And uh, I have a couple of the 10-year journals out right now, but I'm working on more versions. It just takes time that I've been trying to say no to things to make space to create the time to create the versions. But uh, there's a 10-year crop and a 10-year dairy journal, which is like to keep memories in the moment. So people in our in our shoes, actively farming and ranching, I still need to come up with a ranching version. But that's the idea of it is those yearly memories. So the, yeah, having one project, one product for people to recall memories, and then for those of us who are on the younger side to then do the, there is no recall. It is in the moment as you're doing it. So then, then your kids and your grandkids can go back. I think that that is absolutely fabulous. And I am somebody who I am the same way. I love family history and tradition, and I just think of how how important that is in the fabric of who we are and our operations and how much of that sadly gets lost, especially now as, you know, so many people are leaving their farming and ranching operations. And I just think of how many stories that will never be able to be told, mm-hmm. which honestly, like it makes me emotional just thinking about that. So I I love that this is something that you have really like put your heart and soul in. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's been just a driver for me. And every time I work on it a little more and more, I'm like, okay, I have to keep honing in on this project because it's like really, I feel like it was meant to be. And I just feel really grateful, honestly, that the idea came to me. And obviously there's always challenges in business and 
getting a business started, but being able to work through all of that and have it actually become a product that people are like, I don't know. The thing that gets me is just seeing people sitting down with their grandparents, like showing the book or writing in it or talking about stories that they would have never heard. Honestly, it's just like, I don't know. I feel very grateful that God has put this project in my heart and in my in my family's life. Well, so on the family topic, you, you mentioned this earlier. So you grew up in ag on your own operation, but you were raising your family or are raising your family on your husband's operation, mm-hmm. which is a situation that I think that many people, especially women, can relate to because it's very rare that it's when you're on – you as a woman are on your own operation. Yeah. I am in that situation where – Justin and I work on my family's operation, but we are definitely the minority and it's typically a a wife on her husband's operation. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that dynamic because obviously your in-laws are wonderful, wonderful people. And I want to make sure to state that before I go into the question oh, yeah. of like, did you ever feel like there wasn't a place for you because it wasn't your own? Or how did you involve yourself in that process while still remaining really respectful of everybody and the roles that they already had. Yeah, I will definitely say I felt that, but it was by no means anything that they did. Oh, absolutely. It's like and a, I think and yes, I think we're all on the same page as far yes. as that. And I, like I <laughs> we both want to make that known for sure. It's one of those things that's like internal within you, not that somebody else makes you feel that way. So then yeah, how do you navigate that? Because I know a lot of people who who may be wanting to make this move, that is something that they will face. Yeah. One thing I will say about my family, my in-law family, is I've always felt very respected or like welcome in the family. I've never felt like she shouldn't be here type of deal in the family. But as far as the farm goes, I wasn't sure where my place could be. I, I knew that I could fit in this supportive role, which is I love bringing meals, running for parts, being the helpful person that is absolutely needed, especially when it's go time. Um, but we do have a four family operation. So there's four wives, four people being in that supportive role. And I had always felt this pull to, I wanted to be more involved because in my family, we were the only family on the dairy farm every day. It was like together, we're working together We're we all had a job. I was the calf feeder. I loved my job. And I felt like a little bit of that was missing because I wasn't involved in the farm the way I wanted to be. So I started really the journey of voicing my feelings with my husband. I felt like that was, he needs to know before anyone else, obviously, how I'm feeling. And he was really my my rock and my support person and my voice for the beginning of it, like talking through, you know, uh, Mary Pat really has an interest in this. If we can think about how that might look for the family, like let's consider her. I just wanted to be considered for different opportunities. And then I think what really took our family to the next level is we started working with a business coach. I mean, farms are businesses. And for a whole year, we were meeting with this guy, but the wives weren't involved on the conversation or the in-law wives weren't involved because it's all it's three brothers and their parents. Right. So they were in the meetings. And then we we kind of were like, well, I feel like if we're going to be approaching this as a family business, like the whole family needs to be on to kind of talk about the, the dynamics of this operation that we're all a part of. And that I felt like was the stepping stone for just better overall communication with all of us and feeling like a deeper level of trust that everyone really truly does love each other and we want the best for each other. And obviously every family farm and operation has their things to work through. And I feel like we still are too, but I feel like a deeper level of love and trust for all of them after we've kind of taken that next step. Well, and I think that that is something that's so that is so important that that probably not enough families do because the thing that you say about your farming or ranching operation is a business and it needs to be treated like a business. I think that that's something that we kind of forget because we think of it as being more of a family thing. But at the end of the day, just like any business, there's different you know accountability measures and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So I think that I not that I wasn't impressed with you guys to begin with because I absolutely am, but that I think that that is so cool that that you guys did work with a business coach to really cement the fact that you guys are a business and want to operate as one. So you've really shared in that last year that you have found your place both in raising a family and on your operation. Can you tell us a little bit more? I know you kind of alluded to that just now, but a little bit more about that journey and kind of where you're at now with that. Yeah. I mean, it was it started obviously like 
voicing what that I wanted to be more involved operationally. And then I just started to be very open to literally anything. Like any job, let me know. I'm your girl. Like I'll learn it. So <laughs> last fall, I mean, I even did, I tried to, this is very minimal. And I'm sure if any of the guys listen to this, they'll just laugh at me. But I would like totally just go sweep the shop. If I was there and they were working and my kids were playing in the shop, I would just start sweeping and like try to help and be like not a hindrance, but a help, you know, when I was there. And last fall, I kind of got my first opportunity to help in the field. And I started on tillage and they gave me like an easy job. Uh, When I say easy, yes, it's easy, but it was like low pressure, I guess. As a mom with two kids, it wasn't like it was timely, but it wasn't like things were going to hit the fan if I wasn't in the right place at the right time as far as like say it was grain cart driving you know that would be a different ball game (laughs) (laughs) but I just yeah I was open to learning and then this spring I got a lot more time than I was even expecting out in the field and I feel like it hasn't been like all roses and butterflies because it comes with a sacrifice too at home you know if I'm out in the field more there's different tasks that are harder to get done at home or There's more put on my husband because he has one of the kids with him and I have the other with me. I'm still learning what this role looks like for me, but I've really come to appreciate everything, I guess, and all of the opportunities to be involved, whatever it may look like, whether it's feeding everyone, helping keep equipment running or running the equipment myself. I just see the importance in every aspect of it. So if somebody listening right now is thinking, holy cow, this is exactly where I'm at. I like... I want to follow this journey. What would be the biggest piece of advice? What would be the first step that you would tell them to do when it comes to leaving that career, Ooh. going home, you know, and really making a place for yourself? I mean, the first step is just being able to share that with your significant other and being able to have those candid conversations and share the desires in your heart that you're really feeling pulled to. I don't know. There's so much on the journey that I didn't even share that I feel like is valuable, but like working on yourself. So getting help with your mental health, even if you feel like you're in a good mental state, I feel like has helped me grow as a person. And if you're in that decision and you feel like you can't, you're in a stuck place, maybe talking to somebody and working through that with someone that has no no uh, skin in the game would be helpful. I think that is fabulous advice for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into the rapid fire round. So these are the same questions that we ask all of our guests, but they're not necessarily like rapid fire, quick answers. They can be if you want them to be, but that's, that's what we call them. So what is the, what's the best piece of business or personal advice that you have ever been given? I guess, honestly, put God first. That's the best advice. And I think that applies to both business and personal. Put God first. Either way, it's going to work out. Yes. Okay, if you could give people any words of wisdom and you knew that they would take them to heart or tell them something and you knew that they would believe it, what would it be? You are not replaceable. You as a mom and a wife or whatever whatever your role is, daughter, sister, husband, whatever it is, you are not replaceable. If you could go to dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would you pick? Oh my goodness. I would go with my grandma pre-stroke. Because I miss talking to her when she could hear me. Oh, that is that's an important one. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about favorite things. Do you have a favorite book, podcast, program, product, something that has like made your life stupid easy and you wish that more people knew about it or something that you just think that the world needs to know about? Because I think that we all have these things. And we should share them. So is there anything that you wish more people knew about? Okay, well, this homemade PB&J maker that I have, because like my family loves Uncrustables, but you can make literally any kind of sandwich in it and throw it in the freezer. We make breakfast sandwiches with them. So good. And that's been one that I've used as a life hack lately because it's hard to get my kids to eat sometimes, but they'll eat those. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Well, MP is going to send me the link for this. And then we are going to make sure that we include the link because that does sound like a mom's dream. You can basically make your own uncrustable anything. Yes. And I don't know what it is about it, but I've bought other things that are like mom hacks before, like the pouch fillers. And I regret that because it just doesn't, I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Yes. No. Okay. I love this. See, that's why we ask because there's there are these random things that 
that are absolutely genius that the world needs to know know more about. So, okay, what is one quote that you lead your life by? I don't know. I I keep getting into like this spiritual, like put That's God okay. first, give it to God. Like I don't know. I feel like since I've grown in my faith, it's just always been faithful type of quote. So I don't know, give it to God. <laughs> I think that's perfect. No. And I think that that's one of those things that when that's on your heart, that's the thing to share. And and that is, uh, you know, I know that there are so many listeners out there who that's the thing they needed to hear today. So I think that that is absolutely perfect. It doesn't have to be some fancy quote by somebody. It can be as simple as give it to God. And we all know what that means, you know, for us specifically. And I think that that is so powerful, which does not shock me because you are a powerhouse. And oh, I'm <laughs> so honored that you joined us today and just shared your experience with us. Because like I have said numerous times today, I know that there are a lot of people who are in that phase of life right now where this is the thing that keeps them awake at night. This is the thing that is the pit in their stomach because they know that they want to make a change. They want to be more present on their family operation or in their family business, but they're unsure of how to do it. And I think that you have have now proven that one, it can be done, but have have given them a lot of encouragement in how to do that. So thank you for that. And then I am going to ask a question that I probably should have asked before this, but can we give away a grounded journal? Can I yes. buy one and then we can give this away to the audience? You're not going to buy it. I'll just give it away. And I just truly appreciate being on here and I love what you're doing and I'm honestly grateful to be on the podcast. So I would love to give one away. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'll we'll, I'll go in half. I I'll go in no, half or however however it, it works. <laughs> I think okay. I, I have like one more thing that's on my heart to add. When you yes. ask when you're making the decision, I do think when I was making the decision, I was, it's weird. I Obviously, we weren't going to get into the faith journey here, but I was in a little bit of a phase of my faith journey where I was trying to trust God more. But, and I, when I trusted him and took the leap to go the direction that I felt like he was calling me to go, it ch- completely changed my life. Like I've never been happier than I am today. So I do believe like pray and listen if you're trying to make that decision. Ah, uh, yes. If you're faithful in that. Yes. I think that that is, that is definitely one of those things to to absolutely pray about it. And whatever is meant to happen is meant to happen. And, and God's going to lead you to that. Okay. So for the giveaway, if you want to be entered to win a grounded journal, you have to go follow MP on Instagram. Where can people go find you? Marypat.sass. Okay. And then follow of the West.co and take a screenshot that you listen to the episode or tag us in a story that shares what your favorite part of today's episode was. So make sure you're following MP, go follow of the West and then tag us in your stories with just a screenshot that you listened or your favorite part from today's episode. And we will give it a week and you'll be entered to win. Cool. I'm excited. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, MP. This was such a great episode and I'm just so, so thankful that you shared that with us. You know, you you really are a special person and I'm just so excited to have you here and I know that our listeners will have loved you. So thank, thank you, you thank you. Awesome. Okay, well, you guys, we will see you back here next week, but between now and then, do us a favor. Please go rate and review the podcast. That makes a huge difference to us. Oh, wait a minute. Speaking of podcasts, Let's talk about Beyond the Crops. I can't believe we forgot that. I forgot it too. I wasn't even, I was like, oh, we should have people do that when we end our podcast. (laughs) Okay. So MP and Jenna Oshner have a podcast. It's called Beyond the Crops. Tell us a little bit about it and where people can go listen if they're not listening already, which I'm sure the majority of people are. I don't know. I don't know. So it's called Beyond the Crops because it really is a behind the scenes look at farming, conventional farming and what we do day to day, Jenna and I, and we kind of, we do different personal things, but we also dive into agronomy topics, ag technology, uh, sharing about innovations. We've, we've been looking at some future topics I'm pretty excited about. We'll see like just different controversial things that we want to talk about and give our two cents on. So it all has to do with farming though. And, um, we're a couple of farm moms just sharing our experiences as we go. Perfect. Okay. Well, you guys make sure that you go listen to that. And then yes, please do rate and review Leaders of the West because it does make a big difference. And with that, we will see you back here next week. Thank you guys for listening and being here. We so appreciate you. 
you loved this episode, do us a favor and share it with someone else who might find just as much value in it as you did. We're on a mission to continue to grow and strengthen the future of agriculture and Western industries, and you spreading the word helps us make more of a positive impact. It also makes a big difference when you take a minute to go rate and review the show. We can't thank you enough for listening, for sharing, and for loving Ag and Western as much as we do. We'll see you back here for our next episode.